Hi guys, what's up? Thank you so much for watching Reads and Talks. I'm Shivani. In this video, I will be talking about a book called The Courage to be Disliked by Ishro Kishmi and Fumita K. Koga. On the back cover of the book, it's written, a single book can change your life and I really believe it so. It can really change your life if you have the courage to follow this book because it is not something that is easy to digest. It's very counterintuitive, will definitely challenge your present thoughts or ideas, but remain patient with this book and uh, be a little open or liberal in reading this book. Really think that this book can free yourself from the burden that you have been carrying with you for a lot of time. It can really change your life. It can really provide you happiness. For sharing with you the takeaways or the lessons uh, I learned from this book, I would like to share with you the quick overview of this book. So this book is based on Atlantean psychology. Sigmund Freud, Carl Jung and Alfred Edler are considered as giants of psychology and we are all well aware of Sigmund Freud or Carl Jung but we are not so much acquainted with uh, works of Alfred Edler. And this book actually shares his standpoints uh, of his theory, which he propounded, which were Atlantean psychology or individual psychology. His ideas were very much revolutionary and new, and it is seen that it could help us and it can really do. So the book covers the dialogue between a youth and a philosopher. They used to meet on every night and a youth was uh, someone who, who lacked self-confidence, who was very much self-conscious who had a, a feeling of inferiority, who was incapable of finding happiness in someone else's achievement and he used to pity himself. These were the problems that he used to feel. And on the other hand, the philosopher was someone who used to believe, who had the notion that happiness is within the reach of every human. Instantly. They used to meet on every night. They had uh, met on five nights and discussed on various topics, uh, trauma, past experiences, inferiority complexes, interpersonal relationships, a community feeling, horizontal relationship and living in the here and now and lots more. And in this video, I will be sharing with you some of the takeaways I learned from this book. Number one was no experience is in itself a cause of our success or failure. The meaning we give to our experiences is self-determining. It all depends on what kind of purpose you hold to those experiences, all those past causes to um, follow your present goals. And there's a line that can actually capture what I want to uh, say here. No matter what has occurred in your life up to this point, it should have no bearing at all on how you live from now on. That you living in the here and now are the only one who determines your own life. My life is determined at this exact point. Yes, because the past does not exist. I know when you read this book, it sounds so much absurd. I know it's not easy to digest, but it's really important to understand that everyone goes to different kinds of experiences and everyone gives different meanings to those experiences. If you can change the subjective interpretation of your experience, then you can actually look forward in your life and you can start from this exact point to keep changing on the exact point you want to go. Ahead. Number two was taking command of our emotions. I in the book that says people fabricate anger, which is not easy to digest. When I was reading, I kind of realized that it's so much important that we should not get angry when the person on the other side wants us, but we want to get angry because we want us. We should take command of our emotions. Emotions blurs the reason and we are not able to think well, but you shouldn't be saying that I have got on. I have gotten angry because someone has made me. I want to get angry because I want myself to get angry, which is so important and I kind of realized it. Number three is uh, all problems exist due to the interpersonal relationships. As we cannot live alone, we have social uh, interaction with others. We have to exist with others, coexist with others. And due to which we go through the feeling of inferiority and the feeling of inferiority can be good if uh, because it enables you to pursuit of superiority and you strive for growth and striving but it shouldn't be converted into inferiority complex you should not be making an excuse of not taking a step towards something because you lack of something instead accepting it and working on it. Number four was not getting recognition from other. 
and um, having the courage to be disliked which the title suggests as well uh, the standpoint of edlaw theory also says that you should not be getting recognition from others you shouldn't be doing anything for getting recognition from others a lot of times we do something of getting appreciation from others for praise it's it's okay if you are feeling of gratitude towards some work but you shouldn't be having a rebuke nor praise any work if you are doing that you are giving other people the chance to control you and you will get into the hands of others people and others task should be making a clear boundary between others people in uh, and your task you should talk about recognition from others we also make horizontal relationships we keep um the both side on equal terms not on an uh, on a hierarchy one is equal and one must be the same that kind of relationship is um, is explained in the book number 5 was community feeling if you have the feeling of contribution if you have the feeling of doing something to others you can also embrace uh, your worth if you're able to contribute to the society if, if one is able to offer one what one can it's a community feeling one must not had what other people can give to me but one must offer what it can offer x was um, happiness um contribution to others can create happiness seven self acceptance was self affirmations um when we talk about self acceptance we should have the courage to accept our incapable self it does not mean that one must not strive for growth or improvement but one must accept what what one can control and one must have the courage to uh, take the step to what it can and what it can change and making a clear distinction between what one can control and what one can not control number 8 living in the here and the now keeping a spotlight on here and now seeing life as a seeing life as a series of moments not as a line it does not it doesn't have starting point or ending points it is a it is a fleeting moments it's it's a combination of dots and uh, one must find fulfillment in the here and now one must take keep on taking uh, steps to reach a uh, reach a goal and he has given the term for finding fulfillment in the here and now to dancing which means one must take small steps to reach a goal the one should not make a starting point or ending point but making improvement in every day life that is also very good line which i want to show here one is shining a bright spotlight on here and now and one cannot see the past or the future anymore life is a series of moments and neither the past nor the future exist you are trying to give yourself a way out by focusing on the past and the future what happened in the past has nothing whatsoever to do with your here and now and what the future may hold is not a matter to think about here and now if you are living earnestly here and now you will not be concerned with such things to shine a spotlight on here and now is to go about doing what one can do now earnestly and consciously number 9 was uh, life is never incomplete read out the line to you to get the most essence of it if your life and mind for that matter were to come to an end here and now it would not do to refer to either of them as unhappy the life that ends at the age of 20 and the life that ends at 90 are both complete lives and lives of happiness it's so much important um to know this and when when you complete this book you feel that you get get these lessons before which also comes in the mind of youth so philosopher has said that no one knows how you would have felt about it 10 years ago this discussion was something that you needed to hear now so you have to make the change in the present it surely can change the meaning of your life it can change really the meaning of happiness for you and start living in the here and now to make change and do not focus on uh, what happened but um, dancing um now and uh, living keeping a spotlight on the here and now uh, it sounds very much repetitive but uh, i hope this video was of some use i really like this book and um, i hope you read this book once in your lifetime and uh, you should definitely check this book out and in case you like this video do not forget to like share and subscribe also leave a comment which uh, of the points that you really liked and which one you are going to follow in your life and make change um, to soon on next monday thank you so much for watching mm -hmm.